Well, hey guys, I am really excited to open God's Word with you tonight and share with you. We've got a really good story, and I'm excited to tell it. Uh, I'm excited to tell you about it. Uh, but first, I just wanted to say how proud I am of all of you. Last Wednesday night, when we had the Awana Award Ceremony, that was an awesome time. And seeing you guys get your awards and uh, hearing your names get called, and, and that was just that was a really awesome time. So I just wanted to say to each of you, I'm very proud of you. Congratulations on getting your award, and it was an awesome year of Awana, and it was just really fun to, to celebrate that with you guys. Um, it was really cool to see you get your name called and, and have you come onto the platform. We, we like getting our names called. Uh, I can still remember one of the first times uh, that I got my name called as part of a starting lineup. I was in high school, it was my junior year, and we were playing at a big tournament um, at a Christian college up in Wisconsin. And we were standing on the, on the touchline, we were getting ready to play a soccer game, and they were calling starting lineups. And that was my first year starting as the starting goalie on our team. And so I remember they were going through all the positions, and, and at the very last, they said, number zero, James Collard. And my family was cheering, and I got to run out onto the field. And that was just a really cool thing. It was really neat to hear my name called. We all like that. It was fun. You got your name called on Wednesday night. It's just a neat experience to have that happen. Did you know that the Bible actually calls your name? Yeah, it does. Carissa, the Bible calls your name. And Carter, the Bible calls your name. Louie, the Bible calls your name. And you say, well, where does it say that? I don't think I've ever read that before. Well, in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When it says whosoever, that word in there, you can take that out and you can put your own name in there because God is talking to everybody. So he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that if James believeth on him, that if Mr. Billy believeth on him, that if Caden believeth on him, that if Ethan believeth on him, that if Jacob believeth on him, they should not perish but have everlasting life. All throughout the Bible, you can find places that your name should go. In fact, the whole Bible has your name in it because the Bible is written for you and the Bible is written for me. God calls your name and then he says, I have something to tell you. Our story from God's word today is about a boy who very literally heard God call his name. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But before we do, let's ask the Lord to help us. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to study your word tonight. Pray that you would bless our time together. Give us a good evening of study as we look at the story of Samuel. We ask this in your name. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, open them to 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Now, Samuel had a mother and his name was Hannah. And his father's name was Elkanah. And Elkanah and Hannah, they were a husband and a wife. And they lived in Israel during a very wicked time. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago I told you the story about Ehud? And, and, and I told you then that there was a, a cycle of, of sin that we see throughout the book of Judges. And if you remember that the nation of Israel, they would commit sin. And then as a result of their sin, God would bring a nation. He used the Midianites and the Amalekites and others. And the nation of Israel would go into slavery. So you had sin, and then God would con condemn them to slavery. And then... They would beg God, they would, they would confess, the nation of Israel would confess their sin, and they would ask God for deliverance. We call that supplication. And then finally, God would make a judge, God would bring a judge and provide salvation. But the nation of Israel didn't always continue to follow God, and the cycle would start again when they would commit sin. So we have sin, slavery, supplication, and salvation. And we see this cycle repeated in the book of Judges. And Elkanah and Hannah... They are a husband and wife that lived during this time of the Judges. And in Judges chapter 21, this is really the key verse of the book of Judges. Judges chapter 21 and verse 25, it says, And in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. But the problem with that is that the Bible says that our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. And when we try to do what we think is right and we don't do what God thinks is right, that gets us into a lot of trouble. 
And we see the nation of Israel experiencing that during the book of Judges. But Elkanah and Hannah, they were different because they loved God and they trusted God. Every year they would make a journey. They would travel about 15 miles to a town called Shiloh. And the Ark of the Covenant, that was the, the, the Israelites' place of worship before the temple was built. And so they would travel to Shiloh and they would worship God and they would make sacrifices just like God had told them to do. And one year when Elkanah and Hannah went to Shiloh, Hannah's heart was very sad. And she was struggling with all of her heart. Hannah wanted a child. She wanted a son, but she didn't have any children. And so Hannah went into the altar in the temple there at Shiloh and she prayed silently to the Lord. She said, Lord, if you give me a son, I promise I'm going to give him back to you. He will serve you his whole life. And she was praying so hard that her lips were moving, but nothing was coming out. So she was literally, right? So her lips are moving, but no, no sound is happening. And Eli, the priest is sitting and he's looking and he's watching this woman who's Looks like she's speaking, but nothing is coming out. And so Eli looks at her and he thinks, oh, look at this move. Look at this woman. Her lips are moving, but she's not saying anything. And he assumes that she's been drinking. He assumes that she's drunk in the house of the Lord. And so Eli comes to Hannah and he says, you need to put away your, your wine and you need to stop drinking right now. And Hannah says, oh, no, 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 I'm not drunk. She said, my heart is, my heart is heavy. And I'm sad. She said, I've been pouring out my heart to the Lord. I'm asking him to give me a son. And, and she says, when I talk to God, he hears even when my heart is too sad to say the words out loud. And you know what? That's true for you and I today. God knows what we are thinking. He knows our hearts. He knows our prayers. Even when we can't actually get the words out, even when we don't say the words, God knows what we're thinking. He knows what's in our hearts. So we need to make sure that our thoughts and that our heart attitudes are in line with what God wants them to be. Eli apologized to Hannah. He said, oh, I'm so sorry that I misunderstood you. He says, go in peace and may the Lord give you what you've asked for. And so Hannah left and she was encouraged. Eli's words gave her hope and she believed that the Lord would give her a son. So Elkanah and Hannah went back home and before long, they found out that Hannah was pregnant. Woo! She's excited. Right? Hannah is pumped. God has given her the son. And when her baby was born, Hannah named him Samuel, which means asked of God. Samuel, that's what your name means. It means asked of God. And so Hannah had asked the Lord for a son, and God had given her the son that she had asked for. Every time Hannah said her son's name, she remembered that she had asked God for him and that God had given him to her. The next year, Elkanah went back to the temple to worship the Lord and to make sacrifices. And he asked Hannah, he said, are you ready to go? He said, it's time, it's time for our trip. We need to go. And Hannah looks at her husband and she said, oh, I promised the Lord that if he gave us a son, I would give that son back to the Lord. He said, of course, he's much too young to live at the temple. He said, I, I'm going to wait until Samuel is old enough. And when he's old enough, I will go back to the temple with him. I will leave him there and he'll serve the Lord for the rest of his life. Elkanah looked at Hannah, stroked her hair, and he said, You know what? Do what you think is best. He knew that it was going to be very difficult for Hannah when the time, come, when the time came to leave Samuel there at the temple. So he encouraged her and he said, Look, I know that you will keep your promise. Hannah was a godly woman. And he said, I know that you'll keep your promise to the Lord. And so Elkanah went and he continued to worship the Lord in Shiloh by himself until Samuel was ready to go with them to the temple. And if you're there in 1 Samuel chapter 1, if you look down in verse 24, Hannah does keep her promise to God. As soon as Samuel was old enough, probably eight or nine, she went with Samuel and her husband to the temple to worship God and offer sacrifices. And Hannah goes to the prophet or to the priest Eli. And she says, do you remember me? I'm the woman who prayed for a Lord, prayed to the Lord for a son. And she introduced him to Samuel and says, this is the son that I prayed for. And she leaves Samuel there. And she tells Eli, she says, take my son. He will serve you with you here in the temple. 
And before Elkanah and Hannah left to return home, Hannah prayed and she thanked God for the son that God had given to her. She praised the Lord for Samuel. And then Elkanah and Hannah left. And they left Samuel there in the temple with the priest Eli. And Samuel began his life of service to the Lord in the temple. Eli loved having Samuel around to help him with the work of the Lord. Even though Samuel was just a child, he did what Eli had asked him to do. You see, Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and they should have been obedient to the Lord, but they weren't. Instead of trusting in God and receiving his grace to forgive their sins, Hophni and Phinehas trusted in themselves, and they were involved in that cycle of sin in the judges as well because they did what was right in their own eyes. The temple should have been a place where God's people could see his goodness and the light of his presence, but Hophni and Phinehas were cruel to the people of God who came and attempted to worship at the temple. They displeased God, and they they brought great sorrow to their father, Eli. And the nation of Israel became fed up with the wickedness of Hophni and Phinehas. And they came to Eli, and they said, Don't you know what your sons are doing? They said they're forcing the people to give them the sacrifices that they brought to offer to the Lord. Nobody wants to go to the temple to offer sacrifices anymore. They said, The sins of your sons, the sins of Hophni and Phinehas, are causing other people to walk away from God. Guys, we have to be so careful. Because your sin can also cause other people to walk away from God. Some of you have younger brothers and sisters. Micah, Elijah, Ethan, right? You guys have younger brothers and sisters that are looking to you. It is important that you love the Lord and follow the Lord because your example sets the tone for your younger brothers and sisters. And here, Hophni and Phinehas had a position of leadership among the people of Israel. And because they disobeyed God, it caused the nation of Israel to want to walk away from God and not serve him. That's a serious thing. We need to make sure that we're setting a good example for those around us. Because the actions that we do, they impact other people around us. Eli's sons didn't know the grace of God and they didn't go to God and ask him to forgive their sins. They just kept doing what was right in their own eyes. God actually sent a prophet to warn Eli that God would punish Eli and his sons if he allowed, if, if Eli allowed his sons to continue sinning against God in the temple. But Eli, he didn't want to tell his sons that they couldn't continue to serve God. So he allowed them to continue to serve in the temple and his sons continued to sin against God. This was a poor choice on Eli's part. And his sons continued to walk away from God. And so God needed to call somebody else. And Samuel continued to grow and serve God in the temple. And Eli was pleased with Samuel. And the Israelites loved Samuel. They loved his spirit in the temple and in his service for God. And God pleased. God was pleased with Samuel as well. And one night, both Eli and Samuel had gone to bed, and as Samuel laid in his bed, he heard the Lord call his name, Samuel. And Samuel heard that, and he said, well, Eli must be calling me. I wonder what Eli wants. So Samuel hops up, and he ran to Eli's bedside, and he said, here I am. Why'd you call me? And Eli said, it's the middle of the night. I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back and pulled the covers. He's laying in bed, and he heard the Lord call again, Samuel. And Samuel said, I know he called me this time. And he hopped out of bed and ran to Eli's bedside. And he said, Eli, I heard you call me. Here I am. And Eli said, Samuel, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Samuel didn't know that it was the Lord. And so He went and laid back down in his bed and the Lord called him a third time, Samuel. And Samuel runs to Eli again and says, Eli, I'm here. I know that you called me. And Eli realized what was happening. And and Eli told Samuel, he said, go lie down again. And if you hear your name again, say, speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. So Samuel went and he laid back down in his bed and And he heard God call, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered and he said, speak, Lord, 
for thy servant hears. Samuel, God said, Eli has allowed his sons to live wickedly in the temple. And God told Samuel about his warning for Eli and his warning against Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas. He told Samuel that he was going to judge Eli and he was going to judge his sons. Samuel was sad for Eli. He said, how am I going to tell Eli what God said? I love Eli and I don't want to hear him. I don't want to hurt him. And in the morning, Eli and Samuel met together and Eli said, what did God say to you last night? Don't hide anything from me. Tell me everything that God said. And Samuel told Eli everything that God had said. He didn't hide anything from Eli and he told him exactly about the judgment that God had promised. And Eli knew that he had done wrong by continuing to allow his sons to serve in the temple. And Eli told Samuel, God is the judge and the judge of all the earth will do what is right. And we see if you were to read the entire book of 1 Samuel, we can see all throughout the book that God uses Samuel from the time that he was a young child all the way until he was an old man. And Samuel was faithful to the Lord and loved the Lord and Samuel did what was right. He grew in the Lord and the more that Samuel listened to the Lord and followed what he said, the more the Lord spoke to Samuel. And God actually chose Samuel to be a prophet, a man who spoke God's words to the people. And when God spoke, Samuel listened and he told the people what God had said. God made Samuel a great leader and Samuel was actually the last judge of Israel. All the people loved, all the people saw that Samuel loved God and that he obeyed God when God spoke to him. They saw that what God said to Samuel came true. He is a great man of God, the people said. We know he listens to God, and we know that God is with him. Samuel was a great man of God. And this is a really neat story about God physically speaking to a child your age in the Old Testament. But the question is, is who cares, right? How does the story of Samuel affect you and I today? Well, when Samuel was just a young boy, God called his name. Samuel knew it was the Lord who was calling him, and he told the Lord that he was his servant and that he was listening. You know, Samuel could have chosen not to obey God. He could have chosen to do what was right in his own eyes, just like Eli's sons Hophni and Phinehas did. But Samuel trusted God, and he accepted God's grace to forgive his sins and to walk in obedience to God. Samuel didn't just hear the Lord speaking, Samuel invited God to speak to him. The Lord knew that when he spoke to Samuel, that Samuel would not only listen, but that Samuel would obey and do what God had said. And in the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 22, it says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. We need to not just hear what God has said in his word, but we need to take it, put it in our hearts, and then go do it, right? We need to not just be hearers of the word, but we need to be doers of it. All through his life, even as a child, God spoke, Samuel listened, and he obeyed. And you know what? God is speaking to you. Did you know that? God is speaking to you. And you say, well, how is God speaking to me? I've never heard him call his name, right? He hasn't called me in the middle of the night. You know? <laughs> He hasn't spoken out loud to me. God doesn't speak to us out loud anymore like he did to Samuel. But he's given us his Bible, his word, and it tells us what God wants to say to us. God speaks to you through his word, the Bible. He speaks to you through teachers who present God's word to you. He speaks to you through your Sunday school lessons, through your Awana lessons. He speaks to you through other people who know God and love God and want you to walk in obedience to God. God is actively speaking to you. And the question is, will you hear him? Will you listen? And will you obey and do what he says? Just like Samuel, we need to make a decision that we want the Lord to speak to us. And tell him that we are available. We need to say to the Lord, I want you to speak to me and tell me how you want me to live. 
When God says in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that he may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. He's speaking to you, Carter. And when God says in Proverbs 8, 11, for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not compared to it. He is speaking to you, Maddie. When he says in 1 Samuel 12, 20, serve the Lord with all your heart. He's speaking to you, Daniel. God is speaking to you today. Samuel began listening to God when he was young. It gave Samuel his whole life to listen to and obey God. Can you imagine how happy, how joyful your heart will be if you, like the prophet Samuel, listen to and obey God now and continue listening and obeying your whole life. At times, I, I gotta be honest with you, at times it's not gonna be easy. And there may be times when it's very hard. And it could have been that even when Hophni and Phinehas saw how Samuel listened to God and obeyed Eli, that they were jealous and they may have been unkind to Samuel. They may have said, Samuel, why do you waste your time obeying to God and listening to our father? You can do whatever you want. Samuel could have listened to Hophni and Phinehas. He he may have been wanted to be accepted by them. He might have been want, wanted to be one of the cool kids, right? Hophni and Phinehas are running around doing whatever they want. And Samuel could have said, I want to be like them. It's a temptation that we all have. But in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 25, it says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Samuel realized that the rewards that come from listening to God are more valuable than being accepted by other people. And the blessings that come from obedience to God are far superior to anything else that you and I could enjoy today. God wants to speak to you every day. When you read his word, you begin to hear his voice speaking to you in your heart. When you listen to his voice and obey what God says, you will continue to hear his voice. You will continue to be able to obey. The more you listen and obey, the more you will hear his voice. The challenge for us today, the challenge for you, the challenge for me, will we listen to what God says? Will we hear it? And will we obey? Boys and girls, let me challenge you. Be individuals who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Well, thank you so much for listening tonight. I'm excited to see you all on Wednesday. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to study your word this evening. Thank you for the challenge of Samuel. Help us to be individuals who are not just hearers of the word, but doers of it. We ask this in your name. Amen. See you next time.